right, I'm here with my very good friend, and I just, I feel like you're, we're spiritually connected, so I feel like you're my brother from another. Um, Russell Hall, the great Russell Hall, uh, not only amazing bass player, but you play piano, and you're such a great composer, and producer, and you play guitar, and man, and, and of course, I, one of my, my favorite aspects of you is you're such an incredible vocalist, so thanks for being you, Russell, you're amazing, man, you know I love you. Thank you, man, I love you too, man. How, how has it been for you out here? I know we've done a couple of things in the street, but, you know, because of COVID, we've been trying to be safe and protected. Yes. How's everything with you? Things are good. I think, I mean, I'm just blessed that I'm, I'm healthy. I got vaccinated. I saw that you got vaccinated. Uh, I'm doing some outdoor gigs with Alfonso and we talk about you and, um, you know, so uh, did Mona's a couple weeks ago. I know you and I have been doing Great. that gig on different yeah. different nights. I, everybody's been safe, you know, with the streaming. And uh, and I, I got called for some festivals this summer. Like, people are starting to call and, and some outdoor things. Uh, so uh, things things are things are picking up. And but I hope I hope people take their time. I actually, um, you know, um, I do, my heart goes out to a lot of people in India because, you know, how much I'm into Indian music and Indian culture. And, uh, man, I still need to reach out to one of my gurus, Pandit Samir Chatterjee, because it's crazy. So we should really, uh, as, um, you know, we should, all of us should take our time because it's you know, what's happening in India right now, just to, to be extra, extra careful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to shut this off. My heart goes out to the people in India, in Myanmar. Yes. I mean, always to Africa, number one, because right. they've, they've always been going through stuff and their voices get shut out. Not just, you know, you know, West Africa and Congo region and South Africa, but also North Africa, Syria, yes. yeah, all these countries that really get affected. My heart just goes out to everybody, basically. You know, yeah. it's amidst it being a tough time as COVID, we're also still dealing with with just war and poverty and famine and people just being terrible to one another, you know, and, and things like we were saying before this interview are starting to look up because the vaccine is out and people are starting to work on a professional level in the arts um, more frequently, you know, I guess we just can't lose sight of, of what we're trying to do out here, which is to bring people together right. and, to have a conversation as opposed to judging one another, you know, based on political affiliation, race, creed, color, gender, orientation, right. whatever, you know? That's so I'm, I'm happy to be on here, man, talking to you. Oh man, you're such a voice of positivity. And, uh, you're one of the first people I thought of about, you know, when I started doing this, so I'm so glad. <laughs> and, you know, you seemed excited about it as well. So Super cool. I love that uh, the beat that it, that it's so organic and free, and, and I know that that resonates with me. That's how you are too, not only musically but also as a human being. You can go anywhere. You have a, a very um, very positive, loving perspective, and not such a you know not such a agenda. Very flexible. You can go anywhere, and and that also speaks it's to the fight. way you improvise too. It's hard, man. We 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 have never been through these times, right? This, you know, with, with the amount of access that we have, in it, it, it feels like a weird um, parallel universe. On one hand, right. you, people connected more now than ever, you know. And on the other hand, people are completely socially distant, you know, right. completely isolated still. So, you, you know, what we see now is a time where it's, it's so much polarity you know, amidst, amidst an already kind of troubling time, you know, but it's, and it's easy to, 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 to get down and the dumps about everything going on, but, you know, we have to keep fighting. We have to stay persistent. We have to, we have to stay on it. We have to stay out here in any way we can, whether it's, you know, be safe, socially distancing, or if, you know, you feel like you're able-bodied and you're marching or you're doing whatever, it, or or if you create pieces of art that are centered around bringing people together, or if you do something like this and have a Zoom where, you know, you're, you're trying to, to reason and get to get to some, some senses of clarity within 
what we do as artists. So yeah. I'm, I'm just grateful that I'm talking to you. That 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 makes me feel very positive. My family makes me feel positive. The people that I love the most make me feel positive. So yeah, I'm, yeah, you know. Oh man, and I I, I just um. I know, uh, I know it meant so much to me when you, you and I, we did different marches together, lives, you know, Black Lives Matter and Women's Lives Matter and Transgender Lives Matter. It makes it so that we're really playing the music for some of the, the real reasons, the reasons uh, that music exists, is to communicate and create change and bring love and positivity. So thanks for what you do and, and the, ones, the, the marches that you led that I was a part of. It's just such a blessing. And I, you know, I'm always following you too, so I know you're... Um, even just this week, you were doing another one, which is super cool. Yeah, I did one um, for, actually for for Broadway um, artists because they've they you know they've really seen a short end of the stick, um, and and also raising issues about Broadway and and misrepresentation and stereotype and right. the list you know the the long list of of, of atrocities that we we face as artists. Yeah. yeah um and you know it it really showed me and and it was a partner with you and i and why and and you know some members of the wide awakes were there some members of the blacksmiths were there um it really just anybody you know and it's been funny because you see the evolution of the march and and because now they're more they're more gigs for freelance musicians um and artists um you know, not not as many people are marching, and you know, we're always just trying to encourage people to 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 be about something. Whether yeah. you can't march in the street for whatever reason, you know, being out there in the world to to bring some kind of good, whether it's on your gig, but just as long as you're showing up somewhere and you, you're respectful of, of everyone, yeah, working a gig or you're doing a march, you know, and and you're kind, you bring kindness to other people. Yeah, yeah no matter what you're going through because we all we're all going through it and everybody that's right right you know and and it's easy sometimes to, to to go out in public and just be down in the dumps man oh man i can't tell you how many times i've just been around people and i'm i feel like oh man i'm being a drag or, or <laughs> like you know i'm sure we all feel that at some point yeah oh. yeah and he can play a lot of quotes but when it comes to being good, well he damn know that he really should, cause his name is Nick Russo, and he plays the slide guitar and the back hand job, has a family in the deep blue sea. I'm I'm very grateful to have people in my life, you know, that that remind me of of, of the importance of living, and the importance of, of being human, yeah. and the importance of of trying to grow as an artist. So, yeah, that's well said. Yeah. What would you What advice you would you have to a student? Um, you know, either wanting to learn the blues, which is you know the, the the video course that I just wrote and it's out, or just in general, just want to improvise, especially. Um, a fretted string instrument player or string instrument player where, you know, uh, there is a community of guitar players or fretted string instrument players that maybe gravitate more towards uh, tactile and tablature and you put your finger in fret nine as opposed to, you know, the way you and I resonate, which is sing things and connect, you know, strengthen the ear instrument voice connection and have it a part of you. And I hear you improvise, you play such a sincere improvisation. It comes right from your ear. Um, yeah, what advice would you have to give students some tools if they're struggling or they don't they want to get to that um, to that uh, format? Um, the advice I would give to them is just to keep trying. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. It, it takes a while to get used to to the way an instrument feels. But as long as you keep trying, even just a little bit every day, you know, it just, yeah. it, uh, trying, trying is the act of doing in 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 evolution you know so it's like it's like the first time you ever tried to play a blues you know something that we think is so simple you know yeah. it, 
it was difficult, you know, but then once you learn the form and you learn how it feels and you learn the metaphysical, you know, representation of what it is, you know, how, how you move your hand over from left to, you know, from right to left, how you move your fingers. Once you learn that, then you, you know, the sky is the limit, you know, and, and yeah. all, it's been, the blues has been difficult for all of us. We've yeah. all like sit down and be like, okay, this is F7, this is B flat seven. What what do I play here? We've all had to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I think trying is the act of doing in, you know, an improved evolution. You know, it, it's like you you try something and then you, you evaluate it, you think about it, and then you keep trying to create. And you get to a point where like you actually are, are, are performing you know right right and there you just you know it's about evolving man it's about evolving like i always think about my teacher ron carter you know whose birthday it was yesterday he, oh right 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 he always he's always trying something new yeah always trying something new and he's 84 you know it's like yeah he and and he has the way that he plays but he's always trying something new every time yeah. i've seen him play and and if we get to that point where we're always trying something new, reinforced with what we know, then then we're constantly evolving. All right, we're, right. We're constantly growing into into ourselves, you know, into the self that we need to be. Yeah, yeah, that's really well said. And yeah, especially someone like Ron Carter, who's just has been so inclusive and in that you know he's active on social media, just connecting with all of us. It's incredible. With a lot of people. So humble. And so inspiring. And what, what tools would you give a student or what tools did you use when you're younger? I mean, I know you have amazing ears, you have perfect pitch, but also just uh, to students like maybe where they're trying to hear an interval of distance, how would you um, uh, reinforce that for them, especially if they're, they want to head in that path? And previously, they were more about the mechanics. Like, again, you know, guitar players can get stuck and I'm on fret nine and, you know, I get students that come to me that, describe had their relationship with music and it just seems so tactile and visual and I, and you know just a little conversations on the phone before we even start an online lesson and I say oh, okay yeah I got to get them to sing but then sometimes they don't want to sing and and you know just that I mean I you know I work with Miles Griffith we've worked together for so many years I just it's singing everything you play and playing everything you sing has just been something that we know we do as musicians but what would you advise to a student that maybe doesn't do that, doesn't realize it, and you know, especially with frets, <laughs> to get away, to get away from that and get more to the ear? Even starting with something as a like a basic interval, what, what advice would you give? Um, sit down with it and and play it really slow. You yeah. know, just take it take it as slow as you possibly can. Like if you're trying to get the interval of a sixth, for example, you know. You know, you're trying to understand singing in it or, yeah. or singing or playing a six. You know, that you have to first understand what it feels like, you know. And in order to do that, you any feeling, you have to slow it down and isolate it to, as, to what it is, you know, right. that sound, you know. And then you start to find the beauty in all the notes, you know. You know, yeah. you you start to understand that it's that the six is just a third. You know, you start to understand that you start to you start to to become aware of what what the notes really are. You know, yeah, yeah, and and you start to be aware of um, how they feel. You know, how how does how does this resonate different from this? Yeah, right. You know, because that flat six is, you know, yeah. Cause it, yeah, right. You start to understand after a while that, like, every interval is connected. The flat two, you know, you right. hear, you know, you, you, you start to understand that that is, is equally as connected as the, you know, the the flat three or the minor three right you know yeah you, yeah you know you, you you start to connect it in a way that is influenced by recordings right you know 
like anybody that heard that, you know, they probably like, oh, okay, that's Rhapsody in Blue, you know, like they 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 understand it because they've heard recordings of it. Right, right. So it's 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 a it's the three, it's the three, you know, the big three, so to speak. It's it's the the actual practice, like sitting down and just like looking at it and just playing over and over, but. After a while, that that starts to lose it, lose its its lust or its um its luster and all right. that. It's you know, it's instant grat um gratification. So to that's speak. right. You start to just get bored, and you're just like, why am I doing this? You know, and then that's when you have to really learn what it feels like and what it learns to feel to 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 make music with all the stuff that you learn with all the scales. You know why yeah. why play scales because they they help us to access the music that we have inside of us they help right. us to understand how all the notes are connected you know you know like just just you know running up and down scales it can be the most beautiful thing as long as there is a musical um implication behind it like you know i i used to get really bored practicing scales you know, I just run up and down them and, and, and like probably not even play them that well. So then I started, you know, really getting in, into like really simple song forms and just trying to make up melodies, you know. Um, and I started writing tunes like that, you know, just really simple melodies, really simple tunes, almost like shanties, like sea shanties, if you want, you know, and, or, right. and, and, and you know, just something to just to, to get my hands moving in a way that I'm getting the tactile practice that I need that right. is to play the instrument. But then I'm creating music. I'm like, I'm getting the work done, but at the same time, I'm reaping the benefits of the work. Right, right. And then from there, you have to listen. You have to listen to everybody that came before you, good, bad, and indifferent. Listen to right. every single band because... You know, like I found a band called Mandrill one time. Oh, I, I love Mandrill. Mandrill, man. Ooh. You know, like and it's it's just it will be random bands that yeah. you learn. Mandrill is just, us. Just, just enough of what you need to learn. Yeah. You know, about what you, the the base of you know, it's like I love all this. Fen music. Fence walk. Yeah. Fence walk is the most amazing groove ever created. Yeah, it's I'm, epic. We, epic. We, you know, to 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 not uh, detract from the. From the point, I guess it's like, you know, I'm just saying, like, it's yeah. all about listening, feeling, and 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 practice, or yeah. or, or, or or performance, or just doing the yeah. art of doing, you know, because you have to do it. something that I really admire, like a teacher of mine, Frank Kimbrough, who just passed away, he used to practice in the park with no piano and just imagine the fingerings in front of the, you know, of the piano. He just used to imagine the piano, what it would feel like to play certain chords because he had no piano. He had no, you know, and the only piano he had access to was at the gig, you know, and that, that's a lot of musicians. The only drums they may have access to is on the gig yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know, because we're traveling or we can't afford it whatever um but you know it's 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 about being in a constant state of evolution and being at the same time yeah you know like being complete but being open all at once all right because it's like the earth the earth is a com we would never think about the earth as incomplete right right but you know, it's constantly evolving. The chemistry and the biology of the earth is constantly evolving, you know? Yeah, yeah. Physics is constantly evolving. Right, you know? right. So so we're, we're that that is where we live, in the state of absolution and nothingness. Yeah, yeah. Nada y todo. <laughs> oh, that was that was so well said. Man, thank you. <laughs> I, 
I need some more Russell Hall in my life, man. I miss you. I miss you too, man. <laughs> So I, got, I have this resonative tune in the people's key of D. Let me know, is it, is it uh, how's the volume of the resonator? Is it distorted That's or too great, low? Man. Oh, cool. Maybe we'll just, we'll just trade a little bit back and forth.
Yeah, man, <laughs> that would be great <laughs> for, for, for the people out there, you know? Great. I never heard you play guitar like that before. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, man, I was just playing off of you, man. Oh, I, man. I was just play. I don't play guitar, man. But, you know, like, you just inspired me, man. Oh, you man. Just, I remember you know? seeing you uh, play saxophone one time on one of your social media links, and that was it. I was like, oh, that, that just... That just says it all right there. You just have the music in you and you can just play anything. <laughs> it's like, saxophone what? <laughs> oh, man. I, I wish I had a saxophone still, man. Still, my I think my favorite instrument other than the bass, you know, saxophone. Oh, man. If I could play tenor, if I had a tenor, man, I'd, I'd be out here <laughs> in the streets, man. I'd be out here. But, you know, I, I think it's because I love Leslie Young so much, man. Yes, it's yeah. Important. You know, oh man! And he he played drums, right? He gave he gave up the drums because yeah, he, he wanted to, drums. He's like, he wanted to chase the ladies. Down the stairs. <laughs> he couldn't pack up fast enough. <laughs> man, so you know, just um, I don't. It's it's oh, so interesting because I want to share. I want to get some of my students or students that I know are down that road again to visit that topic of. You know, they hear this and they want to be part of it. And then they, they go into that other thing, you know, whereas you and I don't go into that thing. We're just listening to each off, listening to each other. But when you when you hear, is there anything, I know it changes from moment to moment. Sometimes there's no thoughts at all. But it, do you have um, anything to say about like what goes through the stream of consciousness and like one snapshot? Is there anything that's like, yeah, I'm feeling the energy? Because I know we're feeling, we're feeding it off each other's energy. But I know for the student that's trying to get from the mechanical point to that spiritual point, how can we bridge the gap for them to help them, you know, give them from, you know, like sing this minor third, like we were talking about earlier, understand the major six, sing it, play it, and then, you know, start bridging them to connecting it. So, I, for example, like singing while you play, I know I've always been a big, uh, you know, fan of George Benson to hear him do that, you know, or Carlos Santana. Oh, yeah. I think you know it's so it's so funny because there's so many ways to 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 do what we do. You know, some people yeah. sit when they play, some people they don't. You know, yeah, and still get the maximum music out. But I think it's the investment in the moment that is the most important. You know, yes. regardless of what you're capable of or what the what gig you're on or what you're wearing or what you're doing, we still have to play music. Right. You know, like yesterday, I, I I had an epiphany moment where I was like, wow. It really doesn't matter. Maybe it's because we're at Louis Armstrong's house, but but it you know something about yesterday really made me realize like we are human and we are allowed to feel the 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 many emotions of be, what being human is, you know. And that's what Louis Armstrong, you know, spoke about. But at the same time, we need to be invested in each other when we're playing music together. Yes. You know? Because it will help you to figure out what's going on in your actual life. You know, what, when you're invested in the musical moment, you will actually figure out the things that are, that may be issues for you in your, I call it your waking life or oh, your right. day to day, you know? Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a gig and I'll be, playing and then I start thinking about like all the stuff I have to do and all the stuff I haven't done yet all the deadlines I need to meet and like all the conversations I need to have with people and then it's in that moment that I realize I'm now checked out of the gig and I'm like oh man I can't do that because we're, we're here playing music together and that's what brings me to what I, I do in my life you know right right so, one, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I got to spend some time with the great Joe Lovano in a swimming pool, you know, on the jazz cruise. And, and he was just swimming. And he's, you know, I feel very akin to him because he's one of the enigmas of jazz. You know, I think about the many enigmas of jazz, you know, the Roy Hargroves, you know, the 
you know, Joe Lovano's, the Roy Haynes's, those kind of eccentric people, but that are still so socially aware of everything that's going on. And I always think to them because I feel very akin to that, you know, as as big and bravacious as I can be, I'm also a very shy person, as I'm sure you know, and I'm very, you know, I, I can be very soft spoken, you know, it's kind of my my Mr. Cool and, you know, the, the, Bezzy Suave kind of, you know, balance of of living, you know. But uh, you're yeah. very you're a very sensitive musician too. It's a great very combination. Sensitive. Yeah, I'm a very sensitive person, man. It's it's only taken me this long in my life to realize how sensitive I really am. I'm I'm very I'm very I'm I'm a softy at heart, you know. Um, but I realized when I was in that pool with Mr. Lovano, you know, he he said, man. Life is always just about moving from one gig to the next. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that is a different perspective. That's so and, true. And she said that. That's how I've lived my life, man, for better or for worse, you know, yeah. regardless of what's going on. And we all check out at times on the bandstand. We all we all maybe don't give it our best, you know, or maybe we don't have access to be able to give it our best all the right. time. Um, but we can at least try, you know, we could try, you know, and some, and sometimes to be honest, you know, it, the checkout isn't even like a, a, a um, uh intentional act it's not like we all want to do that it just you know life is hard man life is very difficult especially for a lot of other you know for, for people that that really struggle out here life can be very difficult you know um but if we all invest in the moment of where we are at and we really take a step back and really invest in that moment. We'll be able to do everything we need to do in our, in our actual life. You know, if we're invested in this moment, like me right now, I'm talking to you there, anything else could be happening right now, but I'm invested in this moment. And as, and, and once something pressing comes along, of course, we're all going to be like, okay, we need to go handle that. But for right now, I'm, I'm invested in, in what we have to talk about, you know, so that that's kind of how I, I deal with that situation, you know, what what you're saying about like singing and playing, because they, I've I've done both. I've sang while I'm playing and gotten cussed out on the gig, you know. I've got I've 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 not sang and gotten told I'm not playing from the heart. I've you know, so I've I've experienced every side of what people have to say. But at the end of the day, I think it's if you're invested in the moment and you're invested in the song and you're invested in what is actually happening. Even if you don't know the song, Cause there, man, I play hundreds of songs every week, and like sometimes I can't, I can't even remember one, just because life is life can be that hard sometimes. But the but the the truth is, if it's like the balance of aesthetic versus literature. This is what I tell my students. You know, aesthetic is like if I tell you, okay, we're playing at Mona's. You know, you're gonna show up and. I, you know, the aesthetic is Louis Armstrong, Desi Smith, Johnny Dodds, maybe some Paul Whiteman splashing there and, and some Jimmy Lunsford. And maybe we may squeak into the 40s, 50s, maybe, maybe, very rarely, you know. And that's the aesthetic. Do I expect you to know every bass player or every trumpet player or every banjoist that ever played with every trad band ever and played on the 1932 recording of Rudy Valley? I mean, there are people that do that and it's great, but like, you know, I'm just simply not capable of, of compiling that much literature at in a short amount of time. I can compile you know, but I can compile what I can. I can listen to the music. I can be invested in the music. But, you know, that after a certain point, 
we're human. You know, we we're a vessel for so much music, and we're just trying constantly trying to to translate this the stuff that we we learned. You know, um, so for me, it's the balance of literature versus aesthetic. After a certain while, if you don't listen to to Louis Armstrong and Hot Five and Hot Sevens, it's like God help you. You know, that is the standard, you know, and I go to them, I go to Jimmy Lunsford, I go to Cy Oliver, I go to Andy Kirk, I go to John Kirby, all these people I've listened to over the years. You know, these are my, these are the staples. I go to Ma Rainey and Bessie Smith. I go to, and then I go to, you know, Trummy Young and Jack Teagarden and all these people and, and Danny Barcelona and Arvel Shaw and, and Duke Ellington. And count base, you know, I, I I'm naming the names because I have checked out the people. Am I gonna know every song they ever recorded? No, that's but that's not that's not why we come here. We come here so that we can give people music. At, right. the, at the purest fundamental, we're selling music. So at the end of the day, we gotta make music together, you know. Right. And if you have music you wanna learn, you always should rehearse. If you have music you you should learn and you think it's all it, it, it might be advantageous for the band to be on the same page i recommend rehearsal but if we're just getting get it together to play music you know in a bar or in a club like we have to we have to be mindful of of number one the music that the people want to hear the music that people should hear and the music that we want to present the the, right. the track you know it's like what do people want to hear they're timeless songs that people want to hear people love to hear take the a train people love to hear it on the sunny side of the street people love to hear these songs you know they should also be exposed to new music because that's why they you know people we only live to know to learn what's new so that we appreciate what's old yes oh, that's well said yeah. Yeah. So we, we only as human beings we only seek what is new to appreciate what is old you know yeah. We we're constantly trying to, to relate ourselves ourself as we were as ourselves to what we will be. So that's just the that's just the truth and fundamental, you know. So it's it's important to have a balance of of you know, like Branford Marcellus always says, um, you know, four for them, two for us. You know, four four songs for the audience, four songs that we, we know they'll love. Right, to for us that we could just do our thing, you know, because, right. and that's how I kind of, you know, I try to structure my my music and and the stuff I play off of what what I've learned on gigs, you know. I'm a very sensitive person, so I, you know, I love a good ballad. I love love music and romance music, but at the same time, you know, I'm I'm a rebel and I'm a I'm a freedom fighter. I'm here. I'm out here trying to 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 disrupt the system, man. I'm not here trying to be no part of nothing related to the the BS, so to speak. You know. Oh, that's, so that's so well said, and that's a and you you have a, such a great balance of that. You have. Uh, I mean, I always. It's one thing I love being around you and hanging and playing music with you. One last thing I want you to speak of, and which is you all already started to, is this idea of um, of inclusiveness. It, I mean, just Bessie and the Rainbow Kids is so inclusive with diversity. You're very sensitive about um, connecting with everyone and, and bringing so many people from vast cultures, um, regardless of race, color, skin, you know, gender, um, sexual orientation, you know, sexual preference, anything, any of those factors, age. And it's wonderful because you're you. Um, it's so organic and it's not contrived. I mean, 
you can speak a little bit about that, especially just being in a room, whether we're hanging or on a gig, you, you bring that energy to it. Well, for me, it's, I just, you know, like, you, you know, when we're on the gigs, I was, I, I would just compile things based on the people I was around. You know, I think one of the gifts I've been blessed with is that I absorb whoever I'm around and the music that I'm, I'm you know, playing at, at the present moment. So, you know, one week I'd have the, the, the honor and pleasure of playing with Pedrito Martinez or Nicholas Payton or whoever. And that music would seep in to, to what I'd be trying to do, you know, with, with the Rainbow Kids and, and with the people in the band, you know, I am a Jamaican, but I lived in Miami and I, I now live in New York, you know, and I am multiracial, you know, you, if you look at my, my charts, my charts will tell you that I am almost a 50, 50 split of this entire world. You know, I have Asian in me, I have, I'm European in me and I have African in me, you know, and I have native in me. So I, I'm, I'm, I am a man of the world and I, I think that, you know, so so is everyone else, you know? It doesn't matter if you're 98% Ashkenazi Jew or if you're, you know, 1% white and 98% black, you know, it doesn't matter after a certain point, you know? Especially because race is kind of like the, the general underlying thing that is the binary of where we exist. You know, race kind of lives in that thing. Almost with gender, but gender is is even more nuanced than race in 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 just our entirety as a species, as opposed to like our existence in this current place and time. You know, I think gender is just like something that is so expansive to our species and is constantly evolving. And our idea of of how we respect gender is constantly evolving i mean man like i've learned so you know i never i i'm from jamaica so i, I you know i understand that like i understand that a lot of the world is still very backwards in the way that they think but man when i moved to new york and if you would have told me that this boy from kingston was going to be around this many different kinds of people of these many kinds of flavors oh man i would have never believed it and and be completely invested in all of these different kinds of people as well. It's one thing to appreciate and respect others, but if you do not invest yourself in others, that is where the issue lies. The issue lies in the investment in the other person. And you certainly invest, I mean, you fight for everything. Um, and that's, that's just such a beautiful thing. And that's, that's why I always wanna be, um, Part of what you're doing because I feel the same way. If we, we can't just sit back and let it happen, we have to fight for our bro brothers and sisters. These are the, the earthlings, these are all fellow earthlings on this planet together. And yeah, we, I'm, I'm just so happy that you're in my life and uh, and we're, we're doing this together, and it's it's amazing, man. Me too, man. I'm I'm so I'm so honored because it's you know, it's, it's something I've had to learn over the years, the, the different protocols of, of different people as to number one as not to offend, but then to really understand, you know, like I have to really look at myself and say, okay, you know, I am a cisgender black immigrant. So what does that look like? And how is that a privilege? What are my privileges? as a man, as a cisgender man, what are my privileges? But then also what are my struggles as a black person, you know? And then my struggles as an immigrant, which is a completely different thing. It's like, you know, we're just fighting to just be at the table, you know? Y'all are fighting to, to have a bigger piece of chicken. We ain't even in the, we ain't even in the dinner room yet. You know, like we're, we're serving it. We're serving the dinner. We're not even, you guys are sitting at the, you know, so it's, it, it makes it it makes it difficult because on one hand, you know, I'm dealing with the things that we as men have dealt with, which are like just archaic, yeah, you know, archaic kind of outdated um, ways of thinking right. and ways of being. 
But then, you know, dealing with the struggle of, of being a black person in the world and then the struggle of the immigrant, it, it kind of, it's a weird kind of um, balance. It's like a, a mythological kind of right. balance because there is this sense of, you know, we all kind of have a sense of, of, of what it means to be a hero or right. to deal with the hero mythos. And I definitely live in that. Super hot, <laughs> you yeah. know. But, it, but also, at the same token, expanding who that hero is is not just yeah. one particular. And, and what are you a hero to? You know, right? Right. Who, who are you? Who are you helping? Because right. at the end of the day, a hero, a hero is somebody that it could. A hero is a doctor. Right. That's somebody that saves a life. Right. And that they do it in a very normal, not normal sense, but in a in a sense that like it's very orthodox way. Yeah. As musicians, we we try to assume personas and assume the people that we want to be as an artist for the world. Yes. You know? And that's different to being a doctor who is like you could you could be into all kind of stuff and still be a doctor and still be doing your stuff. Yeah. You know. But so much of what we do is a performance. So much of what we do is, um, is about, you know, what it means on a on a more macro level. Right. So you know, as far as the Rainbow Kids goes, my evolution of how I even look at that band is so different now too. You know, the yeah. fact that we all came together. You know, people from different points of my life, people that I've known since high school, people I've known only, a, you know, for a week, you know, it'd be, I, and I just, and, and we just find each other, you know, right. we just find each other and, and it'd be like, all right, you come along, you do this, you come along, you do that. And, you know, you're from Buffalo. Okay, great. Come yeah. play. Yeah. And play. And what I what I've learned from that, and then to expand it even further into like the blacksmiths and and all this yeah. work I with them, and then recently with Unite NY, and then with my own jazz groups and and yeah. other stuff, there is always a sense of political justice in what I do or, or social justice in yes. what I. Do. But at the same time, there you know. I wish for there to be a place that we can get to where we are aware of what has been done, but we don't live in it. Right. And that's, that's, that's where I, where I'm at right now. It's like, I wish it, we could get to a place where like everybody was accountable for what they, what they've done, but we don't have to live in it. You right. Know? Right. Yeah. That's well said. Yeah. And I, I guess that's you know that that is something that is constantly evolving. We 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 don't know to what extent that is gonna be. You know, yeah, we just, yeah. At this point now, we're just trying to to get there, right? Right. Whatever right. there is, while still evolving on there, because you know, what if we get to a place where like we have a female president and we have more female representation in the world, and then, yeah. You know, then we have more, you know, people of color representation representation in the world. You know, are we gonna now change the mission? Are we just gonna stop? Because then we have to focus on the earth. We have to focus on all the endangered species. You know, right. we have to focus on all on on the water, on the on the, the rising sea level. We have yeah. to focus on the climate. We have to focus on the forest. Then we have to focus on the infrastructure. How are we gonna maintain this? How are we right. gonna sustain ourselves? Then we have to focus on people eating meat. Is it ethical? Is it not ethical? Right. Does it matter? In this? So it's, you know, I'm going down the spiral, but you know. No, it's just, I, I, he, I totally hear you. We have there to play our part. To think about that are, that impede upon our, our, our livelihoods as a species, as a society. But in truth and in fact, we, we, we just exist. We just exist as as we are and as something that is beautiful and something that is sublime. Yes. You know? And we have to continue to grow and develop way beyond just social justice. Because social justice, after a while, we're going to get to a point where people get the idea. But what do we do beyond that? 
you know, how do we evolve beyond that? Do we just rest and stop? Do we just continue abusing the earth and abusing nature? You know, so, and I've been really more focused on nature lately than I have been social justice, mainly because you also see the, the, the kinks in the, 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 how everything is connected. It's just like, you know, you look at the, the black community and you, you see the things that are wrong with it, but then you see people in that community that are, you know, that are, are, are creating issues, you know, that are creating, that, that create problems, you know? And I'm not talking about gang bangers and stuff like that. I'm talking just like, just day to day, we, you know, our level of kindness to one another, you know, our level of, of maintenance of, of the earth, you know, what are we feeding our kids? What are we feeding ourselves? Why are we feeding ourselves meat and all this stuff, yeah. you know? It comes down to individuals too, just reaching as many yeah. individuals they I mean, eat. Access, I mean, it's yeah. access because then you look at, okay, so we don't have access to all of this stuff. Right. So, how we how are we ever gonna do something if we don't have access to it or if we've never had access to it? So then yeah. that becomes a question of like how do we so all in all what I'm saying, I'm kind of just running around in the circle. No, no, it totally but, makes makes sense. But it's to say that, you know, we need to we need to focus on the fundamental and the fundamental root is what is sustainable, what is practical and how long will it take? Right. Know? What what are the what are the steps that are the most practical for us to get to a place where we can evolve past eating meat and 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 all the plastic bags and plastic and water plastic bottles and, and all the just the, the the harm that we're doing to the environment. Yeah. Because that also affects. You know, it's like when it's a, when it's sunny outside and when it, everything is clean and all the garbage is picked up and, and it's the most perfect day. It don't matter if you're in New York or if you're in Miami or if you're in Bangkok or wherever. When 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 everything is 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 taken care of, it doesn't matter where you are. You yeah. feel like, you know, yeah. The and the issue is that that access is not afforded everywhere in the world. Right. So that's something that needs to be addressed. No, you, you, you're totally right. And, and letting and giving people avenues like I was in a restaurant and I, I don't we're not going to a restaurant pickup. And I, I mentioned about the plastic bags. Hey, you know, I use these corn based bags. And and she said, oh, you know, we can't afford those yet. And I said, I'll, I'll give you some next time I'm here. And I was showing her on Amazon. They're really the same price. You can get corn compostable bags that we've been using for years and years practically the same price as plastic bags so these idea of access but also letting people know that it's there and and then you know tissues and toilet paper you can get bamboo which is more replenishable so we we've been doing that for years and having a compost using solar energy so uh you know i'm, I'm tr we're trying to do at least with our family we're trying to do our part but having these conversations and talking about it um you know, it's always the danger of advertisement, but when I when the subject comes up, I at least let people know, hey, you can get these plastic bags, uh, these corn-based bags instead of plastic, and use cloth bags and use, um, you know, these uh, canteens. You know, I've, you know, I travel everywhere with these instead of um, getting a plastic water bottle. Just these small things. But you're right. There's still remote. There's still parts of the world where, even if they had the knowledge, they still don't have the 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 means to get that. So and that's where the work has to be done is getting the knowledge out there, but. Um, you know, contributing or donating some money where those areas of the world where they can access um, compostable bags and, and other ways to uh, to uh, preserve the earth. And yeah, going towards being a vegetarian, try to, try my best to spread that message. And I know I have a lot of vegan friends and I just admire them so much. And I try to, you know, do as much work as possible to lean towards just eating vegetables. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just, you know, it's it's hard because that it, it's a part of a of a deeper conversation of, yeah. of what is what is ethical, you know. Yeah, what, right, right. And what is morally what what is our idea of what is morally sound, you know? Yeah. Our sacrificed animals are a part of, you know, indigenous people's right. livelihood, you know. And you know, it's it's like a buffalo. Like they would they would use every part of the buffalo. They pray to this animal. This it's like 
it's like a blessing from God, you know, and and they would they would use every part of the animal for their everyday life. They would take care of the animals, young, everything, right. you know. But when you drive through, you know, anywhere in the U.S. in the rural U.S. and you see these, you know, farms with cows, you know, for miles, and it's just this odor. Oh man, that that's when you know that this is not coming from a spiritually sound place of of what what these animals you know were supposed to be me right. personally my honest personal feeling is we don't need to eat me it's been right. proven that we don't need to eat me right we as human beings we're like we're like pandas basically pandas are carnivorous creatures that 99 percent of their diet is bamboo 99% of their diet is bamboo and they're actually carnivore apex predators you know so these these are things that i think about you know it's like yeah. and then furthermore we have created the idea of what being sentient is and being right. a human being even right. mean so we have this ethic sense of protection of the environment so why do we why do we need to do that right you know, right that's that's kind of where I, where i'm heading to yeah. I don't judge people based on this, but I right, of course. don't live my life according to, you know, eating meat and, yes, and ab yes. abuse of animals and the abuse of creatures for our own personal gain. You know, I and, and that disconnect too, like all this meat just is just factories and cages, and we don't see that whole part of it. And that's where some of my vegan friends may, many many years ago showed me those, some of those videos of what actually happens, and that's. Something I think as a responsibility, everyone should watch those videos and read about it. And then if they make the decision, it's a little bit different, but it's so disconnected that you, know, you just go to the store and you pick the stuff up or you go to a restaurant. Yeah. And, bes and besides places like Bear Burger, it's the, the it's so good. It's, it's, you know, you can have a burger, you can enjoy a burger, you can enjoy the taste. And it's really uh, hard to tell the difference actually. And there's, um, you know, yogurt made from plant-based yogurt and, and um, Oat milk. I'm a big fan of oat milk. You don't have to use dairy. You know, yeah. So no. many great options available. I mean, again, we talk about access. I mean, we live in New York, so it's not fair to say it's not always available. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 hard because when you go to to South Side of Chicago or you know Little Haiti or Jamaica, Jamaica, which is a place that is perfect for a vegetarian. It it's not it, because it's it's. Eating meat, weirdly enough, as much as it, eating meat is weirdly a colonial kind of, you know, socially charged thing. It, it really is because it, industry is a socially charged thing. You know, Every, everything that is that we live in right now, I try to tell people it, it, it stems from a white supremacy. It does. Yeah. Every, the whole existence of how we live in the world. Is is it is it great? No, sometimes. But like that's, you know, we live in buildings built by people that lived in white supremacy. You know, where yeah. It, yeah. where we live, we live in it. You know, yeah. we deal with a political and and a and a criminal justice system that yeah. is charged against people of color. That's just yeah. a reality. You yes. know, I see this in the street. I see it in the way that I dress and the way that people make. Yeah view me and i also see it in the way that i dress and they may view other people of color right i you know it it has nothing to because i've experienced it when my hair was short yeah when wearing suits all the time i've experienced it the way i dress now it do, it doesn't matter you know yeah. it doesn't matter they may think you sometimes they think i'm muslim sometimes they think i'm dominican sometimes right. they I'm, they don't even know. You know? Right, right. It, it doesn't really matter. I think people are just afraid of the other. Yeah. You know? Wherever you go, if you're not the exactly like everybody that's around you, yeah. you, you know, you you can feel it sometimes. You can feel yeah, that. Feel the vibe. And the people that really, you know, the people that they only really want to bond with people that are like themselves. Right. And try not to be like that, man. Right. Because that's where we have to we have to touch younger kids. We have to touch the children. We have to because they're. I, f I feel strongly that we're not born that way. It's just it's learned and it's modeled from from parents and kids. But are just I so innocent. believe that the younger generation is going to do it because yeah, I see it now. You know, there are kids that like 
they're trans at like two years old. Like people, yeah. and not that not as synonymous with with being a good person, but right, like, right. People, are, people, are, and especially now. I'm, I mean, I can't believe I'm 27 and I'm looking like, wow, look at the younger generation. Like, I, why am I even saying that? But like, you know, I'm looking at people in the, in 18, 19, 20, 21, and they they get the idea. Like, they just they just want to be free. They want to yeah. do the thing. And it, you know, it may be intense, but it, yeah. it's, it's very real. There's a show called um, Little America. I think it's Netflix. Have you seen some of those little short series? I think there's four or five of them created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched them. I watched Ooh, them. Like, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's powerful. It speaks to, you know, some of the things we're talking about. And, uh, well, we're going to keep fighting for this, Russell, man. I love you so much. This has been amazing. He's... <laughs> so inspiring and um i want to make sure you know you know you know how i am with my kids i share everything with them so i'm sure they're going to enjoy this and it, and it's so nice to see them grow up in an environment a safe environment and a free environment and they see you know how open Bettina and i are and, and non-judgmental so uh, at least setting that as an example of you know you, you could be anything you want to be and doesn't matter you know <laughs> transgender or race or size or age or color of your skin any of this stuff um and we you know we don't we don't have choice of what color your skin is when you're born and then as you said as an earlier age when you make those decisions we want to be in a place where that could be accepted you know couldn't have said it but i mean that's 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 it right there we just want to be accepted yeah regard you know and I see it in your kids, man. I see, I, you know, I see it in your family, you know, Lydia, man. I think about him and how he's going to grow into, you know, an incredible, you know, he has such incredible parents that just get, oh, it, just get the peace and the love and, and, yeah. and you guys cherish your family, man. So thank you for making me a part of your family. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. You're a big part of our family. It's very soft. Not very loud. <laughs> Night on a cloud where Syria I'm gonna have something better for you the next time. I, I love you guys. I see She's you guys fine. later. <laughs> and and the rock concert, me and my mom and you and Liv. Oh man, I would have loved it. All my brother's concert, man. Thank you for me, man. That was that was incredible. That was great. That was great. Might be, you know, it's so great to be. Yeah, you're definitely an extension of the family. So, and and your mom too. The the times I've hung out with your mom, I always thank her for making you. I mean. You, you've come from such a great, great energy force, and she's an incredible woman, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're a fire. Oh, pure fire. Just, just so much fire, man. Yeah. Too I don't know. I owe a lot to her, man, because yeah. she, she recognized in me that I was never going to be no athlete or no doctor or no, you know, nothing. Nothing. You are an you are an athlete. You're an athlete of music, and you're a doctor of music. That's it. We have to just we have to change this language, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I appreciate I appreciate. Oh that. yeah, thanks for doing this. This is amazing, uh, incredible. I, the first thing I want to do is go um grab my kids, but I'm also gonna back this up on a hard drive. <laughs> Don't want this to be lost. Archive. Well, I love you. I love you, Russell. And I know we're going to play soon. Things are opening up. I know we're going to jam and play some music soon. Very soon, man. Yeah. Peace, man. Peace, brother.